just heading for the Irish Sea to dip my toes in the water and uh, plenty of pebbles down there. So I'll grab. So I've got my pebbles and I'm going to dip my toes in the Irish Sea to signify the start of my coast to coast on the walk for Olivia. Here we go. Done, done. Got my pebbles, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to start. <laughs> Well, okay, I've decided to be honest and I have stopped walking for the day and I've checked into a B&B in a place called Moore Row and it's nearly seven o'clock and it's a, it's a b and minus the breakfast. I've got a reduction to 40 pound and I decided to stop here because I was actually, uh, I got lost and I bumped into a lady that was walking her dog and she told me the way back and she said to me, have fun as you do your coast to coast. And I realized I wasn't having fun because my back was killing me. My backpack was just way too heavy. So I've checked into a B&B because uh, I thought my, I thought my, it's just it's doing my back an injury. I can't do this. Uh, it's, my back's really in pain and I'm gonna be ruthless with my backpack and find something to get rid of. I'm gonna leave some stuff here. I've talked to the manager. I'm gonna be as ruthless as I can and just get rid of some of the weight. And so I'll spend the night doing that and get off to an early start tomorrow morning, minus the breakfast. And so that's the truth. That's where I'm at and uh, that's it. Just uh, never seen anything like it. The whole of this area is covered in moss. Just the whole area around me. It's beautiful, look at it. It's like a hill with little mounds covered in moss. Magnificent, beautiful. It's like something out of a fairy tale, actually. It's beautiful. just gone six o'clock in the morning and I'm just leaving the Ennerdale Youth Hostel and uh, got up uh, just before just about 4 30 and got myself ready to get my bag ready and snuck out of my room try not to disturb the the other guests lovely place for a stop actually uh, I've got a bit of a problem uh, I'm at a bit of a turning point here. I've got to work out which way I need to go. So I need to fire up my handheld GPS and my batteries have died. 
and um, the batteries, the only batteries I've got left are at the bottom of my backpack. And so I've had to empty out my backpack to get to my spare batteries. That's the legacy of having your batteries in the bottom of your backpack. just left the black sail hut um, another thing that wasn't what I expected it's been upgraded and uh, beautifully run it's actually run by the same people that run the Ennardale um, youth hostel where I spent the night which was fantastic Kirsty uh, the manager that was running that was terrific I had dinner there and spent the night there so, uh, stayed in a room with uh, Two other guys called David, so the three Davids in the one room and got in there, it was brilliant. And uh, so uh, I just stopped off at the uh, Black Sail uh, Hostel, famous Black Sail Hostel, the most isolated hostel in the whole of the UK. And apparently there's a four wheel drive um, that runs supplies there every now and then. So I met a lovely couple that were uh, just there for the uh, weekend. I think they're there, they, they hiked hiked there, spent the night there, and uh, meeting up with some friends somewhere in the region. And, uh, gotta watch where I'm walking. And uh, so it was lovely, and gave, gave them a fly. I told them what I was doing on the walk for Olivia, and uh, they're gonna check me out on Facebook and try to make a connection, which is lovely. I hope I get to uh, see them in cyberspace, it'll be fantastic. So I'm on my hike this morning. I think I'll end up at, end up at Honister or somewhere i'm not sure today so i still have no um, internet connection or phone so i i can't tell anybody where i am so possibly a few people concerned about me at the moment but i'm absolutely fine this is amazing the weather's fairly good a little bit chilly but it's panoramically magnificent no one else where i am at the moment uh, i'm not meeting too many other people that are doing the coast to coast but uh totally spectacular where I am and uh, God is good so I'll keep moving on just had a bit of an episode <laughs> at the Black Sail Lodge where I accidentally knocked the toilet roll into the toilet the toilet here I accidentally knocked the toilet uh, roll into the toilet I only do these sorts of things now I offered to pay for it but they said no it's no problem they <laughs> didn't accept it so here we go Okay, so it just started to snow. Uh, that sounds very romantic, but um, the problem is if it snows too heavy, it'll white out and I won't see the trail. So um, I don't know whether you can see it, uh, but I hope it doesn't snow too much. So gosh, here we go. I need to press on before I lose the trail. I don't really want to stop because it, um, I've got to keep moving in the snow, uh, but I, I have to show you that it is actually snowing here uh, when this comes out in the film. And I, well, I need to move. It's very cold and uh, I can't stop. It's sleepy too, but it is actually snowing. So it's gone from what, from what was a beautiful morning 
and showing promise of a lovely sunny day to snow and sleet and uh, now it's uh, just bitter cold and unpleasant <laughs> and so uh, I've just come through the honest uh, uh, slate mine and um, it looks like there's a visitor center down here and so it's about midday so I'll probably stop and see if I can maybe get something to eat and uh, uh, forward on. I've lost my signal, I was on top of the mountain so I had a, a momentary time of getting a phone signal. I got a message through to my wife, she's messaged me back, I don't know what, I haven't had time to check it. I just had to get through the snow because I, my greatest fear was that I would lose my trail and, so, and my finger and I, I rushed to put my wet weather gear on and uh, I just got it on in time, my clothes were getting wet and there was a panic and uh, I got through the snow, thank heavens, and uh, uh, managed to get here. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll forward on and see what um, the day brings and how far I get today. Um, and we'll, you never, you never know in England, you get all kinds of weather in one day and today's proof of that. So I'll head on down to the visitor center and see what they've got on offer down there. <laughs> and we'll see what happens today. It's an adventure on the walk for Olivia. <laughs> So this is my pod for the night. Oops, I made. I couldn't have waited a second longer. I needed somewhere to stay. Uh, I, I was in the area and uh, I came down with a, <laughs> a bout of gastric and uh, this place appeared exactly when I needed it. I couldn't have waited a moment longer. And the only place, the room, only room they had available was this and uh, there was nothing else, there was no dorm or anything. I needed a room for myself just to consider my backpack and what I'm gonna do with it. And so this is perfect, cost me a bit of money, uh, but uh, that's okay, you know, I've got a room to myself. It's quaint, it's cute, and so this is great. This is just outside of, where am I? Um, Rossway, just outside of Rossway, and it'll be really nice. So uh, I got a meal organized if I can handle it for tonight, so I'll be, I'll be fine. This is where I am. It's just after seven o'clock in the morning. I guess it's day four on the walk for Olivia. And I'm walking out of the Borrowdale uh, Youth Hostel and uh, I've, I, I had gastric, which is what caused me to check in here. And I'm a little bit tentative this morning, uh, but I'm feeling okay, it's a lovely day. And uh, my, um, I've, I've downsized my backpack, I've left some of my gear behind here. And uh, I've also adjusted my backpack a bit this morning, I'm thankful for that. I had a quick prayer before I walked out and then I noticed something about my backpack that wasn't right and uh, that I, I neglected and actually I've made some adjustments and um, it's feeling a bit better this morning. So, and there's the pods over there where I stayed last night and I'm really thankful for those pods. It cost me a little bit more money than I was hoping to pay but uh, I really needed it. And uh, goodbye pods. As usual for Dave Palmer, who is not very organized and is lousy at reading a map. I got lost again this morning, maybe lost, I don't know, feels like an hour, but. And so eventually I kind of got back to working out the GPS.
away we go. Excuse me for sniffing. It's part of being in England in the cool weather. Some, a lot of it is scrambling, a lot of it is over very uneven rocky surfaces. It's very uh, uncomfortable walking. They don't tell you that, but I just want to show you this. Look at this. This is what you have to walk over. The, the path is not even, in fact, sometimes it's not even distinct. I'm not even sure where I have to walk. Where do you walk? Look. Somewhere, there, somewhere, not sure. And it's boggy too. Um, I've lost the path. It's somewhere in there. There it is somewhere. That's what they don't tell you on the, <laughs> on the movies, on the YouTube channels. <laughs> you just keep walking somewhere. Hope you don't twist your ankle. So I'm having a little game with myself when I get to the corner up here that uh, I don't know what's around the corner, kind of hanging out for the next time. I'm dreaming of uh, fish and chips and the vinegar on the fish and I don't know whether they got any anything like that in the next town but that's what I'm dreaming of. And on the corner up here I have a celebration, I'm going to have some water and three gummy bears and so um, a little celebration regardless of what's around the corner. But I'm gonna have a little celebration. That's what I'm gonna do. Just up here. No matter what's around there. Did, uh, more walking, uh, no civilization, but I've got three gummy bears here and I'm gonna wash them down with some of Ennardale's finest aqua pura. Here goes. Yum, yum, yum. Just an update of where I'm at. I've had to check into a hotel at um, Ambleside. Um, there is, uh, I was at Grasmere and there's no accommodation anywhere. In fact, virtually all over the Lakes District. There is a bicycle race on that I didn't know about and there are thousands of bicycle riders everywhere for the race this weekend. The whole of Grasmere, in fact, just virtually the whole of the Lakes District was booked out. I went into a pub, uh, hotel, and they found some accommodation for me, a very expensive <laughs> here in Ambleside, and they put me in a room here. Um, cost a lot more money than I wanted to spend, but I had to stay somewhere, my body's aching, and I'm glad to be here, actually. I'm relieved to have somewhere to stay. So I'm trying to find accommodation tomorrow in Patterdale. Uh, my family are trying to find it. The, the, still, um, the youth hostels are booked out, and so I need to go. Uh, I'm actually going to have a short day tomorrow. I'm going to stay here, have the breakfast that comes with the expensive room, and uh, I'm going to have a late start. I'm going to go through. It might, I think I've probably only got about a five or six hour walk uh, through the mountain range to Patterdale, and then I'll prepare for a long walk from Patterdale through to Shap. But the problem is I can't get accommodation at Patterdale, so my family trying to help me. Again, I think it must be the bicycle race, race being the whole weekend. So again, I'm trying to get accommodation. Not long started my day today, and I've uh, elected for a shorter day today, only four or five hours walking. Um, there are three options this morning. I'm on my way to Patterdale. I could go uh, through um, uh, Helvellyn, which has uh, a really scary, I think they call it, it's, it's like, a, like a razor uh, climb where you, I'm not gonna do that. It's, it's, it's just, uh, I forgot what they call it, but it's just just an it's just a very dangerous. It's not it's nearly a mile high. I'm not going to do that. It's yeah, um, I'm going to go for the for the valley descent, 
uh, just an easier, uh, 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 two hours shorter journey into, into Paradale. Here we are. We'll uh, some more of your brothers or sisters, whatever they are. Thank you. Looking back over this amazing valley, two things going through my mind. Number, number one, I got a message this morning from uh, Lisa Garcia, our prayer co coordinator at Believe Church, just to say how um, I Believe Church praying for me this morning. On Mother's Day, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Big shout out to all of our faithful uh, 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 church members at Believe Church. Thank you. I love you. Appreciate you. Pastor Jerry and the team there, Jonathan, and uh, Pastor Neil and Alison Grady just supporting the, uh, the church back there. Thank you. Uh, this is a message for you. Happy Mother's Day and thank you for just looking after things back there. So a bit of your worship this morning. Uh, Lisa sent a video through. Just great to see you guys out there worshipping. And so um, thank you. Uh, just second thing through my mind, uh, I trained for this. I'm climbing up this mountain. I walked Clear Mountain in Samford um, for five months to train to do this very thing that I'm doing now. And so it was worth it. God bless you guys. I've got to keep walking. Got a long way to go, about three, four hours of walking to go before this day finishes at Paddedale. God bless you. Thought I'd let you know what I'm doing. Thank you. One of these mountains around me, I'm not sure which one it is, called Helvellyn. And uh, it's got a section on it that's kind of like a bread knife. It's called uh, Striding Edge. But um, uh, you don't go across there with a heavy backpack like mine and you don't go on a windy day, people have fallen off it. And so I elected not to go that way. My family would not have appreciated me doing that. And so uh, I'm going the easy way today. There's three routes on this mountain trail. And uh, I elected for an easy way to die. Just coming into Patadal and looking at the mountain that is before me that I'm going to have to climb on my 16 mile journey tomorrow and it is the most um, daunting day on the whole of the coast to coast I believe and it is uphill pretty well all the way 
and it is the highest point on the whole of the coast to coast. I've got to climb that tomorrow. No stops on the way, all the way through 16 miles. Uh, I'm about an hour's walk out of Patterdale and um, uh, because of the race, the bike race that was on at um, Grasmere, you know, again, I couldn't get accommodation anywhere in the Lake District. Oh, look at this little lamb there. Have a look at this. Oh, how cute. There are quite a few of them, actually. Oh. oh, they were running away from me. It's not even six o'clock in the morning here. Oh, poor little fellas, look. Trying to get away from me. So I'm not, I'm not interested in you, it's okay, just say hello. And, uh, gotta find the right trail. Here it is. Yes, that's where I'm supposed to go. <clears throat> so, um, I couldn't find accommodation in Patadar. So, um, our, our dear friend Chris, whom we're staying with in, in Ilford, near London, found this place for me. Um, and it's about an hour's walk out of Patadar. I caught a bus here, I didn't have to walk here. And my concern was, is the walk for today is the hardest on the whole of the coast to coast walk. It is um, the highest climb and um, um, it's, it's to the highest altitude on the coast to coast. I'm just watching where I walk. And um, they say by the end of the day, you'll be cursing the name of <laughs> Alfred White and Wright. And so I'm setting off before six o'clock. But um, so I had to get, uh, Chris got me this place. I stayed here, I was concerned. I'd have to walk another hour because there's no bus till 10 o'clock and I didn't want to, wait that long I'd have to walk another hour add another hour to my walk but amazingly I spoke to the manager last night there is a shortcut Ta -da! Uh, to the um, to a point on the trail and actually I may actually save an hour hour and a half from my walk there's a point on the on the walk called the knot and quite honestly I don't mind saving an hour hour and a half on this the worst <laughs> The worst day and I'm a little bit intimidated by, oh, by this have a look where I'm walking so this is where I'm walking around trees and stuff like that so I don't mind actually saving a little bit of time I'm a little bit intimidated with the weight of my backpack uh, about this day being so steep I haven't got there yet but it's gonna be incredibly steep and so um, just thinking you know uh, while I've been walking up the hill here I'm I met a guy down the bottom of the hill who it was an older gentleman and he he was walking his dog and he looked like he was a widower and um, uh, it made me and he was a lovely fellow and he saw that I was lost and and he he told me how to find my way up to what I'm looking for and I thought I'd take a stop and my paws on this steep hill and just take a moment to reflect this and and and, and it made me realize he had the company of his uh, of his little dog going out for a walk at six o'clock in the morning and he thought he'd show this lost backpacker how to go you know how to find his way and he said to me you know a lot of backpackers are too proud to ask and I said I'm not I said I'm desperate you know and he smiled and told me exactly what to do and I thanked him for it and I went on my way and I, and I realized something you know true happiness people people spend money and pursue careers and they uh, they they search for happiness and neglect their families and one of the things that I'm discovering in life that discovered it that true happiness is not out there true happiness is in your own backyard
And I really believe, and you know, and I know that, that, that we certainly, the church that I work for, we, we've, we're really discovering this. True happiness is found in community. True happiness is found in, in, in relationship with those that you love and an and, and authentic, genuine community. And, and you know, for me, um, what I'm doing is very, very isolating and very lonely and, and it's a lonely walk. And most of the time I'm on my own and I miss my family. I, was, I miss my wife and my daughter. And a lot of people do a lot of things to find their identity. But I think real, true identity is found by association and connection with the people that you love the most. The walk for Olivia is a walk championing, championing those that are victims of domestic abuse. Abuse. And really, the, uh, uh, and they're, they're ones that often are running from the people that ought to be the ones that love them the most and give them the most affection and care. And, and because of violence and, and, you know, people that are confused about their own identity and their anger and, and that, that are hurting the ones that, that, that they're loving because of confusion in their own identities, you know. To, you know, so my thought today is this true happiness is at home. True happiness, your real sense of a purpose and identity is with the ones that you love, and we need to we need to get that sorted out in our lives, don't you reckon? And uh, so, these times of lonely reflection when I'm out walk, maybe people that have got anger issues ought to do some of the things that I'm doing right now. Get out and walk, to go for some long walks, and 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 have a bit of reflection, and do what I'm, you know, some of the things that I'm doing like this, and have a think about what you're doing with your life and what matters most. Get lonely for a while and realize what's important to you. And so, you know, I walked the Camino through Spain a few years ago, and it made me think. I miss my family more than anything, and. And right now I miss my wife, I miss my beautiful daughter Jessica. Uh, they mean more to me than anyone in the whole world. I miss my church, my family, my spiritual family, my friends. And, uh, but it's from a sense of community that you find your identity. And, and you know, we all need someone. Didn't the Beatles sing something like that? You know, we need someone to love and I get by with a little help from my friends. So I've got to keep walking, I've got a big day today, but I just sort of share that, um, that the most important things in life are not things, they're people. And so, and uh, you can spend a lot of money and go on long holidays. You can get things and all sorts of stuff, but true happiness, true sense of purpose and identity comes from relationships and community. So Walk for Olivia is all about championing those that, that really have needs in their life for love and security. So let's keep milk moving. I had to turn back from the route that I was going. As awesome as it looked, it was leading me astray. It was the wrong, wrong route. I've got to go to Kitsi Pike, which is the highest point on the coast to coast. And I'm, uh, I picked it up from a GPS on my phone that I was going the wrong way. Well, it's about quarter past 10, and I finally made it to the summit of Kitsty Pike. It's the high point of the coast to coast. Pretty high, I wouldn't want to jump off the edge here. And so I'm here with my backpack. And uh, I set off at six o'clock uh, this morning, and um, I made it. It's, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't nowhere near as bad as I thought. I took a steady climb from my accommodation, and uh, it's quarter past 10, and I made it. So it's all downhill, I understand it's pretty grueling downhill. Coming up was nowhere near as bad as I thought, but I'll show you over the edge.
scary it's watching a guy go up there now a lot of scrambling coming down a bit challenging on the knees um, hope it's easier going downhill from here we walk along the river So I've just stopped. The weather is so beautiful here. It's so hot that I have just had to put on sun cream lotion. I, I'd forgotten that I bought it actually. I've, and uh, so I was just looking through my um, toiletry bag because I, I had some insect repellent for midges, English, English little gnats. And I thought it had some sun tan lotion in, in it and it didn't but i found i bought some i'd forgotten that i had it in my bag so so i've just put on sun uh, tan lotion which is great i feel good about that and i've had some um um electrolytes um because it's so warm. it feels like about 26 degrees i don't know whether it is but the sun's beating down on me I can feel it stinging my neck but i'm happy now i've had some built on beef jerky and some disgusting shortbread caramels um, and biscuit. But it's all food, it's light, stuff I can carry. And um, I feel energized, I've had a little break and I'm ready to rock and roll. And I'm gonna go as far as the eye can see until I get to somewhere to get to my accommodation for the night. So it's off to the wild blue yonder, or the wild green yonder, whatever it is. As I'm walking past the Hawes Water, in essence, I'm leaving the Lake District behind. Uh, and I'm actually glad uh, because it, um, as beautiful as it was, and I mean, I've, I've had it at its worst and I've had it at its best as well, and I can't complain. I mean, it's, it's been a real experience. Uh, in many ways, it's been humbling. It's humbled me. And um, I'm gonna have to concentrate here. I've got to go through this boggy bit, so I've got to be humble, otherwise I'll end up in the bog. Whoops. I find if you uh, don't concentrate, Oops. I have to concentrate very carefully, otherwise I don't. Okay, now I can talk, I think. What was I talking about? Yeah, I mean, the Lake District humbled me in many ways. It dealt with my pride. Uh, it taught me a lot. Um, it taught me to prepare. It taught me not to take things for granted. Uh, it taught me I was naive. And uh, it did me good, actually, I think. I think, um, made me appreciate my family, it made me stop uh, a lot of things actually. It's a lot, you know, so I, I think I'll be unpacking a lot. I'm, I'm certainly approaching this whole walk a lot differently and, and appreciating, a lot, appreciating a lot of things very, very differently. This is a, an honesty box. You can just put in uh, your uh, 80 pence and grab a, a tango or a coke and put your garbage in the box. It's a great idea, isn't it? I'm going to have one. Drink it by the, by the bridge down here. Awesome.
sure who's going to give right away here, but I've got to go through. Balls. Sheep and goats move, but the balls move. I don't know. How do you get through? They're going to move for me. I'm kind of relieved. I don't particularly feel like having an altercation with a bull after walking since six o'clock this morning. That's kind of like nine hours of walking. Thank you, boys, girls, whatever. It's not going to move. So now I'm going to move. Relieved, relieved, relieved. Thank you. The last three, four kilometres of um, a long day, supposed to be the hardest day. Um, I actually didn't find it to be the hardest day. Um, I found the hills uh, not as hard as the books said. Um, and uh, I actually found it was one of the better days for me, to be honest. The weather was great. The sun was shining. It was steep for sure, but I've been training for that for five months before I came out here. Coming down on the other side wasn't too bad. There was about uh, a 20 minute section where it was scrambling and a little bit uh, hairy. But uh, you know, that, that, that was just that one section and uh, you know, I dealt with that. And uh, walking around the, um, the reservoir at Hall, uh, uh, Horsewater, I think they call it. Um, yeah, it was a long walk and there's a few parts of that where it was uphill and that was fairly exhausting and about 1.30 I started running out of energy and got a very, very weak and eventually I sat down and took my socks off and uh, until the ants came out and started crawling over me, they didn't bite. Uh, then I got my energy back, had a bit of biltong and uh, beef jerky and I, I got, felt energised again and, and uh, probably got two more hours of walking to go, hour and a half and I'll be at Shap at the Newing Lodge. And um, if, I, if I catch a, a, a village before there and I can get something to eat before I check in, I'll do that. Looks like I've got a telephone signal. I think I see a few messages coming through. It's a bit more civilized walking these uh, lovely little fields, so I'll keep going. It's uh, 6.15 in the morning. I'm just leaving the new Ing Lodge in Shap. It was a, a great place to stay. 20 pounds for the night, and I think I think I paid about 13 pounds for a two course meal. It was a really good meal, lovely people that I stayed with. Pretty well everywhere I've been going, I've been meeting great people, all nationalities, American, uh, English, all tremendous, great help. And, um, I, I'm doing something that I haven't done before. Yesterday was supposed to be the hardest day. It's a 20 mile walk. And it's quarter past six in the morning and I've actually, I'm getting my backpack transported. I realize I've got a bag that it's, it's strong in a way that you can make it into like a little backpack. So I've done that and I'm carrying my essentials, even some wet weather gear. It's not supposed to rain, but just in case it does, you always carry that stuff in England. And I'm doing, uh, a lighter walk for 20 miles. It's a long walk from Sh uh, Shap to Kirby Stephen, and I've got accommodation booked tonight. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna have a little more of a more pleasurable walk, hopefully today, although it's a real long walk. And so I get my, my backpacks being shipped for 10 pound. So I'm gonna enjoy the walk, hopefully a bit more. I am a bit tired. My legs and muscles are a bit sore, so I've taken some ibuprofen, br whatever you call that, anti-inflammatory. So we see how I go. Got to keep an eye on my GPS so I don't get off track. This is day seven on the walk for Olivia. Just found this little abandoned 
something or other, I don't know what it is, a rock, a stone thing, and I'm uh, cooling my feet uh, in the shade uh, for the rest of the walk for the next eight hours. So having a bit of a break and there you go, that's what you do, take your shoes and your socks off and you're gonna have a little snack. It's my break, my rest time for a few 15 minutes. This is what I've been dreaming about. Fish and chips and mush and beans. Kirby Steve. Yeah. This is the best fish and chip shop on the coast of I'll put myself in here. This is the best fish and chip shop on the whole of the coast to coast. Absolutely. I got served in a minute, one minute. I'll put this out there on social media. I kind of like starting with the view out of my window. <laughs> uh, I'm in a hotel in Kirby Stephen and uh, spent the night here. And I'm about to start, I think it's day eight of the walk for Olivia. And I like to be honest about the way I feel. I'm here, my backpack's here, heavy and ready to go. I tried to get my backpack carted today. I just, it hasn't, hasn't happened, it's not gonna happen. I've gotta, I've gotta take it with me. Got up, wake up this morning and I realised, you know, um, I'm, by the time I finish today, um, I, I won't even be halfway. Not quite, but almost halfway, but not. And I woke up this morning and I thought, I, I, I honestly felt like, I don't know that I want to continue this. I've got pain in my body and, and I'm tired and I'm, I won't even be halfway. And I felt like giving up. I'll be honest with you, I felt like giving up. But I've had breakfast. I'm going to keep going. I've uh, read in a book this morning that it's going to be boggy. I don't like that. They recommend gaiters. It's not Australia. It's England, but it is It is hot. Uh, and um, let's see how we go. Hopefully I get to the end of the day by about four o'clock or something and uh, check into where I'm staying and uh, um, rest up. It is a B&B, so it won't be too bad. And I've got a video ready to upload, but I've got no Wi-Fi. Well, I've got Wi-Fi, but it's not very good. I couldn't load it up. And so, uh, just being honest, um, I will be glad when it's over, but uh, I've got another week to go yet, and um, I'm, it's, 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 it's good, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing my family. And um, here goes, just being honest with you, the walk for Olivia. Coast to coast, Robin Hood Bay, 108 miles. St. B's, 82 miles. So, 108 miles to go. I'll better keep moving. The obstacles begin. This section is notorious for bogs, so this might be a mild introduction. Here we go. In the distance is, can't quite see it, it's the nine standards. It looked like tents on a hill and they're actually rock, rock sort of 
uh, mounds and not sure why they were built. Some think maybe they were built uh, to ward off their enemies, to make their enemies, to make them think it was an encampment or something like that. But I'll be up there in about 20 minutes time and we'll have a look at them. Could be just fine. Is a nice standard. An amazing position too. There's a little bit missed out there today, but absolutely a uh, panoramic view. Okay, I'm walking through bogs this morning, but to be honest, I have to be um, thankful because um, I think that they could be worse than they are. Uh, if it had been raining, so uh, I'm not getting too muddy. Fortunately, I'm just dodging the really boggy parts. And uh, they warn you; they they suggest you should wear gaiters and stuff like that. I haven't. I've got a little pair of gaiters in my backpack. I haven't had to put them on. Oosh, I'm looking what's coming up, and I'll show you when I get there. Uh, <laughs> I could have spoken too soon. I don't think so. I think I'll be all right. But um, so this is. Um, uh, I guess we're coming into Yorkshire, Yorkshire moorland, and so I'll show you what you have to walk through, and here we are. Got to walk through this sort of stuff, and so the the morning's like this. So I just got to watch where I watch where I put my feet. That's my morning. This is Bogland. Okay, got to keep walking. <laughs> This is the quaint little town of Keld. It's where I stayed last night. And I thought I'd just get up for a little short walk. A bit misty this morning. And wonderfully, the coast to coast starts right here in a couple of hours' time. Okay, just leaving the Eastview BB and uh, Stuart and Dorothy really taking care of me there. 
I think so much so in fact that uh, they have agreed to transport my backpack to Ruth. Isn't that amazing? Well, they saw me going out of the door and uh, that's when they stopped me and they said, hey, we'll take your backpack to the next town for you. And uh, I, I kind of sort of said, oh, are you sure? I said, look, I'll give you something for it. He said, no, no, just, we'll take you to the next town. And so I spent the next last 15 minutes just unpacking and get, getting my smaller backpack. And, uh, and they're, they're just, you know, taking it for me. Isn't that amazing? A big shout out to Eastview B&B and Dorothy and Stuart and Manatee. I'll, I'll put some pictures on my phone. Uh, I'm on this video for the Eastview B&B in Keld. It is the quintessential dream village to stay in if you want a getaway village just somewhere in the English countryside. You want somewhere quiet, quaint. It's an absolutely amazing village. It's about 25, I think, or 20 or so people live there and they all work together, volunteer. They've got a community garden, a fruit garden and orchard and it just works. Have a look at this place. Why wouldn't you want to live or holiday at least in a beautiful place like this and uh, they all work together and so there's a there's a lovely little shop there with a beautiful garden at the front and people have coffees and teas and what have you there and uh, look at this there's a rabbit in front of me here oh, it's gone but look at this yeah exactly beautiful 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 so you want a picture postcard Felix to escape to, I can highly recommend Keld, uh, Keld and uh, Eastview B&B. Big shout out to Stuart and to Dorothy. Dorothy's a great cook. She doesn't just cook, you know, great English breakfast. She does and it's as good as they come. And she, she does uh, Asian food. And I had a beautiful curry last night and great coffee, everything. So. Uh, oh, this is this is one of my dream lists. So I want to come back here someday. A little bit precarious this walk. Oops, now watch your step here. Just commenting on how. There's so much rubble on the inside of uh, these buildings, you know, they must be hundreds of years old. We don't know how the rubble, whether they caved in or whether the, the surrounding hills caved in on them, but uh, they were built to last, but so we don't know how. And they were really well built, how the rubble kind of got in there, not sure. Quite impressive coming into this area, seeing all this mining stuff. 
these ruins, particularly on the hill, I can't see it much from here, but significant ruins on the hill there. confession to make, I finally succumbed to trying out the Kendall mint cake. And you know, it's actually, it's not bad. I kind of rather like it. And I reckon it's a sugar overload. But I do like my sugar. Sugar. <coughs> so, I got, I got um, a piece here. Oh, oh, ah, big piece. That's what, that's what it looks like. So that's it for the day. Well, the good news is that I have officially passed the halfway point. Woohoo! And um, tonight I'll be staying in Kiel, and uh, one of the only places I could get again. I'm staying in a B&B tonight, and uh, tomorrow I will be setting off for Richmond. And um, what I plan to do, if I can get my backpack shipped to to uh, Richmond t uh, tomorrow. I'll see if I can organize that if I can. So what I plan to do is to uh, walk to Richmond and then walk past Richmond uh, three or four miles and then catch a bus back to Richmond uh, and then have a rest day in Richmond Friday night, Saturday night and then Sunday catch a bus back to where I uh, walked previously on Friday and then it'll make that that walk shorter because that day is that that next section of the walk is a long walk it was supposed to be 22 miles 23 miles so I'll cut it down to about 18 miles and so that that's the rationale in that it's not a regional idea I've heard other people doing it just want to do a shout out to Terry and her of the Arkleside country guest house here at Wreath and I spent the night here. They were very hospitable and uh, felt made me feel at home as soon as I arrived with their uh, lovely little daughter here. And uh, it's uh, about half past five in the morning. I'm leaving early. I told them that I would be leaving early and uh, on my way to Richmond. I'm actually going past Richmond and then um, about four and a half miles uh, just to make the following day shorter and then I'm gonna catch a bus back. <coughs> and um, But uh, they were kind enough to offer to carry, take my uh, backpack to um, Richmond for me today, my larger backpack, um, to make my journey a bit lighter today. And so it's very kind of them. And uh, Hannah is uh, attending a gym uh, a few miles away from Richmond. And so uh, uh, she's going the extra few miles for me and they're dropping it off for me for free. So it's very kind of them today. I really appreciate that. So the weather looks a bit overcast. Looks like it's been a bit of rain here. Hopefully I don't get caught out today. And so I'm on my way on day eight or nine. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm certainly past the halfway mark now. And uh, my boots hurting my foot a bit, so I've got to make a bit of adjustment before I get fully on my road at half past five in the morning. And this is Wreath. I'm a bit going off track, so I film these guys while I'm doing it, trying to get back on track. Going through a field with no trail, just using my GPS, it's very challenging. If I didn't have this $2.49 app, GPS app on my phone, I would be totally freaked out right now because it's just, you know, there's, there's, there's places there are no lines, no marks at all, and it's like six o'clock in the morning, I'd have no idea where to go. So, so I thank God for this cheap app that I downloaded with a whole bunch of other things and I didn't even know I had it on my phone. I found it by accident about five days ago. And so it's, uh, 
It's a real blessing, I tell you what. For a dummy like me, who has no sense of direction, it's saving my skin right now, I tell you what. Thank you, Mr. Wainwright. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, thank you, boys. Making way for me. Coming in the mask, and there's a sign there telling me I've got. Oh, I'm relieved. It says six miles to Richmond. Us. I thought he said nine, and I was. I was starting to just get worried. Uh, but the sign, there's a sign saying the coast to coast goes a different direction. So that worries me because, um, okay, Wainwright, Wainwright has a habit of dragging things out. So it's probably going to be longer than six miles knowing Wainwright. Okay, here we go. St. Edmund the Martyr. I just like this sign, look at this. Tired and thirsty, drinks and snacks available seven days a week in a peaceful little church at the top of the stairs. Have a quick look. I don't want to stop too long, it's too early. It's only about five minutes past eight in the morning. Go have a quick peek over the fence. Oh, look at this. Quite little church. Churchyard is consecrated ground. Please don't let your dogs foul the area. No, oh, there's a church up there. Love to stay. Gotta keep going. Look at this lovely garden. Somebody puts in a lot of time and effort here to shape all these trees. Richmond. Gotta keep going because I'm going another four and a half miles past it. Nice. See these things all over England. Never see them in Australia. This is a very confusing sign to me. Richmond 3, Richmond 3. Very confusing sign to me. I'm wondering if the Irish invented this sign. Very confusing sign to me. I'm going that way. Always a relief to see this sign. You know you're on track. <laughs> Looking over the suburbs, the other suburbs of Richmond, it looks like a beautiful place. Love this, it just feels like an old English street. Sounds like one too. Just stopped for a cappuccino and um, a lovely scone and got to book, book some accommodation um, at a shop gate, I think it is. Reminds me a bit of Durham. Can't wait to come back. Couple hours to go yet though.
I'll tell you something, this has got to be coast to coast heaven right now. Ain't that okay? With your teeth. Just leaving Richmond and uh, getting a taxi to uh, the next town to start my 20 mile walk for the day. Here we go. So there were no buses, it's Sunday morning, no buses to Bolden on Swale, which is where I've started my walk about uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, but um, I figured I had to catch a taxi and uh, I kind of heard that the taxis stay up late at night and uh, there's a chance that they won't be available in the morning my daughter wisely said dad go and book a cab so I went across spoke to the first cab in the rank uh, last night and the guy said wait for me at the monument in the middle of the the Richmond Square he says I'll be here and then he, he got up at seven and he's out there waiting for me almost dozing at the word lovely lovely guy and chatted with him told me they asked him how does he how does he do does he get much business he said just makes a living you know and so uh chatted with me and dropped me off so I gave him a decent tip you know what a, what a lovely lovely man and so here I am uh walking a probably about 20 miles today and so uh, that should leave me I don't know 60 plus miles left to walk I'll be guessing for the walk for Olivia so fair bit to do today hopefully most of it will be on the flat I think and uh, hopefully not too boggy maybe a bit of mud today we'll just see and so far the weather's fairly nice and hopefully it stays like that today we'll see how we go There is a village coming up and there's a church in the village and I believe that it's claimed to fame. Now the village I think goes back to the 14th century and it's claimed to fame is that there is a memorial in there for uh, one of its deceased that claims to have lived to the age of about 167. Well, we'll quickly pop in there if we go past it, I believe, and see if we can find that memorial. Jenkins, I believe his name was, and we'll see if we can find it. This reminds me of a far side joke. We're not standing. You guys read far side jokes? Are there any, any chance of far side? You know that? No? Nice. 
This is the monument to Henry Jenkins. I believe he reckons he was 167 years of age when he died. Uh, this is street lamb. I kind of figured they played a dodgem football here because of the, uh, as if there's a few obstacles on the football pitch, uh, as you can notice there. Street lamb. That's a novel idea. came after me maybe they thought I was going to feed them or something and so it's a bit different okay so they've got to go over a railway track here we go oh, legs are a bit stiff been walking for a while this morning so okay stop look listen I can hear a train <laughs> Okay, good timing in there. I can actually hear a train coming. And there it is, he actually is coming now. Oh my gosh, I better get off here. He is actually coming. I can catch a train, how about that? I'll stop up here and get a shot of him as he comes through. Close one. <laughs> okay. Take two. Okay. So I'm walking down the coast to coast road and I see this Volvo coming down and it's Jeff and Sandra Jowett. I can't believe it. And in nine years they haven't aged a bit and they came <laughs> looking for me and they found me. Look. Yay! Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> With the grandson in the back, they actually oh, found me. Look at it. Hasn't they? Hasn't aged the day in nine years. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. How cool is that? Fantastic. <laughs> that was an unexpected surprise visit. They they just came looking for me, and they actually just turned into this lane, and they found me. They were only looking for a few minutes, only 10 minutes from their home, and they just turned into the street and just found me. How about that? Amazing. <laughs> there they are, just going off now. It's coming up to five o'clock in the morning, and that's the beautiful misty view out of my window this morning. here in Ingleby Arncliffe. I'm leaving my nice little quaint little bungalow cabin at Ingleby Arncliffe and I'm heading for the Cleveland Hills. Uh, feeling a little bit of a pain in my foot ankle so I'll just stop and adjust that as I go and say goodbye quite a little garden it was a lovely spot and uh, here we go
I'm eating my one pound flapjack that I bought back at the place. And it's not bad actually. It's, um, it's um, pecan and blueberry. It tastes pretty good. They even put them in a resealable bag so you can save the rest for later. For all the Aussies watching this, if you can see that little pimple of a dot behind me, it's Rosebery Topping. And there's a monument on there for Captain Cook, if you can see it. And uh, Captain Cook is a, it's Captain Cook Coast in this area. Cook's Cottage in Melbourne, near Botanical Gardens, near the Botanical Gardens, came from a little village in this area. And uh, Captain Cook would have most likely climbed that, uh, that, that mountain thing there, um, um, uh, somewhere down the track. Uh, so it, this is Captain Cook country here. Rosebery Topping, he would have climbed that. There it is. These are the uh, so-called wane stones. Not sure why they're called that. That's what they're called, the wane stones. Just checked into the chop in, chop in. I think they call it um, hotel. I think oh, it's a chop in anyway. And I'm in a little um, little Helen and Wolfgang uh, run this place. And I'm in a little nice little thing here. What do you call it? And so that's where I'll be tonight. They pick me up and they'll drop me off in the morning so this will be nice uh, and I've got two more days to go, two more days I've just left the Buck Inn uh, the Buck Inn is uh, a pub near Claybank Top it's about four and a half miles away which is just over seven kilometres away in Australian terms and uh, you sort of have to make a phone call from the Wayne Stones, which is about um, 30 or so minutes away from the, the road back here. Uh, you give a call uh, to the pub and then they send a car up for you and it picks you up and it drives you the four uh, miles, four and a half miles to the pub and you stay there and then the next morning you have breakfast and then at 8.30 they drop you back off. I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of those people all over the world, in England, in Australia, different parts of the world, America, uh, that have just constantly been sending comments of love and support and prayers to me. Uh, it's meant so much because, that, you know, if it wasn't for you, I don't know that I'd be here right now. And so, uh, a big shout out. Thank you, every one of you. Hello. <laughs> Hear that guy over there? Don't know what it is, some kind of turkey. Having a go. They shoot those things, I think. So I've got to watch out for, for, the, for the... You hear a few gunshots. I'm not going to shoot you. Okay. Well, I've reached the famous Lion Inn. It's a very isolated pub, and for a minister, I've got to be honest, I've never been so pleased to see a pub. <laughs> Spent most of the day today uh, walking through the Yorkshire Moors, fairly flat. Uh, well, I guess in many ways fairly boring, no, nothing much worth filming, nothing much uh, worth to say, hour upon hour upon hour of just um, really flat, flat, barren <laughs> wilderness. It's just on 5am in the morning 
and I'm leaving the Arncliffe Arms where I stayed last night on my final night on the walk for Olivia and I, I think I'm heading in the right direction. I'll check my, my map in just a moment. And uh, this is the last day, no more sleeping in B&Bs and youth hostels. This is the last day of the walk for Olivia. I'm on my way to Robin Hood's Bay. This is the Beggar's Bridge, not sure why they call it that. Beggar's Bridge. like to say on this uh, last video um, of the walk for Olivia on this last day um, how much I've appreciated all those that have um, supported the um, walk for Olivia cause um, It's actually quite beautiful walking through this forest at first light. I was outside on the, on the road at five and uh, ready to go. And it is magical here. And so, um, so I'm hoping I get into Robin Hood's Bay, maybe about 1.30 or something. Uh, but look at this, this is just beautiful. Sun's coming up. Light streaming in on the trees. It's just a magical forest. Beautiful. Why not? Walk through some fancy estate behind me. Quite beautiful. We're coming into a uh, heartbeat country where they um, film that TV show, so, and Grosmont. There's a deer in front of me, actually. I don't think you can see it from here, but uh, a little deer. Oh, okay, so, and, ah, oh, don't think you can quite see it, but there's a deer up ahead. <laughs> Are you a guard llama? Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Are oh, you cute? Some nettles, so you gotta be careful. Interesting morning this morning. Deer and llama. There we go. It's going to be an interesting day on my last day on the walk for Olivia. <laughs> Deer and llama already. How about that? There you go. Seen some oaks already this morning. Huge oaks. And I'm thinking, man, these things are hundreds of years old. So, it's going to be an interesting, certainly, start to the day. This is the old toll house. 
still has the toll sign on the house there. But there'll be no paying of toll today. Just coming into Grosmont. It's only 6.30 in the morning, so I'm pretty sure all the choo-choo trains are gonna be asleep. So I actually don't mind too much. I'm, uh, my main focus is uh, finishing the um, the coast to coast and seeing my family. So I can come back, see the choo-choo trains another day. And uh, All quiet at Grosmont, so I'm um, just having a little quick walk to see if there's any steam trains here. I don't know whether there is. Certainly there's a, a carriage here, probably no steam engines, but I'll have a quick walk, see what's here. See the old carriages, cannot see steam engine at all, but at least I can see the old carriages. Mm, no, that's look like a steam well, here's my first glimpse of the sea. You can actually say I, I can see it. Um, well, Well, here I am, back at the coast again, two weeks later. The only difference this time is, is my backpack is lighter. And I guess that's symbolic also is uh, that in many ways, I think I'm carrying a lighter load. Um, I don't think I've got as much baggage as I had two weeks ago. I haven't got as many preconceived ideas. I'm not as naive. <sighs> One of the things I also learned the most is, is that you need, you need people to come alongside and help. You need not to be afraid to ask for help. And, I, and I've had a lot of people that came alongside and helped me and a lot of friends that have been a great help to me and support to me along the way. And I really appreciate that. So I'm back here again at the coast. And uh, I think my aspirations are a lot simpler. And... Um, uh, <laughs> life is a lot simpler for me at the moment and uh and i'm appreciative of the help that i've had so just keep your eye on the tide <laughs> well if it's not if i only see the roof i know it's too late <laughs> i want you in the picture come here come here okay I've got to get the camera on. This is my... I'm eating an ice cream my wife just here. This is my backup support man. Um, John was with me every step of the way, by phone every day. He'd come out to me on the coast to coast. I couldn't have done it without this man. This is John Cram and he's a le living legend. Okay. Legend. 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 All right, so here we are at, at the... Um, this is Robin Hood Bay. Yeah. And um, I'm eating an ice cream. My wife, my wife showed up. I didn't expect to see her. So um, tradition is that you. <laughs> G'day, how's it going? <laughs> Some other fe fellow Aussies. No, 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 no. Oh, sounds like it. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> oh there you go. Oh yeah, we're just just doing the official thing for YouTube. Oh, fantastic. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Wonderful. Thank you. We did it for charity, so that's oh, what. Great. So we're doing it live. You're on. You're on camera now. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. You haven't yeah. got a police record or anything. Not this week, no, no. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Have a good okay. day. Sure. So here we go. 
So um, the, the official thing is we're going to put our, put our feet in the North Sea now. We, we did this on the Irish Sea. And so I've got the two stones. I've got um, one for Olivia. This is for Olivia. And uh, we, we got this from the Irish Sea. And uh, this, this represents, this represents um, my mom, Olivia Palmer, the walk for Olivia. She was a victim of domestic abuse. And this also represents um, Dare, Karen Johns, her organization, the, all of those victims that, 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 that she is supporting, uh, and all those that really have, have got on board and have donated to the, for, the, for the walk for Olivia, this represents them. So we're gonna, we're gonna ca ca cast this into the sea when this young fellow walks past. So here we go, this is for them. Okay, that's gone. And this one here is my, this is my one here. And uh, this is for my family, and uh, this is, this carries my heart, and this is really this is my uh, uh, this is for my family, for my wife, my daughter. This is my personal stone for the people that I love the most, and I'm sending this out there right now. That's gone out there too. So now, John, you can film this, and you can get me in there. Let's get my fingers off the lens. Off the lens. That's it. You get my feet. Thank you. Right, so your feet. Nobody else will want to watch you look at your feet. <laughs> so here, this is, this, is as, this is as wet as I'm going to get right. in, the, in the North Sea. All right. We're done. You're in. We're in. <laughs> That's the finish. From one coast to the other, coast to coast, the walk for Olivia, we're done. Thank you very much for following me. Really appreciate your support. Thanks, John. Thank, Thank you. you man. There you go. And here's the surprise backup team. Here's my wife hello. and Guy Crammon in the front seat hello, here. Hello. It was great to have Jeanette here supporting me. Yes, I'm wonderful. There you are, you are wonderful. I love you, darling. This is it. We're going up yeah. out of yeah. That's John Crammon. Heavy load. John Crammon's just done donuts in the sand. And we're now going up out of, what is it? Robin Hood Robin Bay. Hood's Bay. <laughs> getting down here was a challenge. Yeah, we'll get up. We'll no, be getting up will be a challenge. A as challenge well. as well. Well, it's a challenge you can do on your backside. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.